I, I think that's that's absolutely brilliant, and that's sort of I think that's a good segue into your new book that you're yes that you're working on, um, joined up thinking. And yes. let me let me see if I understand the, the premise. We were talking off camera, and you mm-hmm. sort of yeah, you, know, you mentioned that there's there's all of us with these predispositions, and we know we all perceive the world differently. And you effectively argue that this is this is a very adaptive um, strategy, um, and it's good for society. Um, is that is that correct? That's what you've been you've been writing on and looking at, or am I, am I missing some elements there? Yeah, yeah. So exactly. So it was very much inspired by um, the science of fate. And I just want to can I really quickly go back to science of fate because this no. is a really cool kind of like technological development. Um, so we're now able to image. Uh, babies' brains in the womb as their brain is developing. And we can see that neural circuitry, so those eight to six billion nerve cells, kind of connecting up for that baby in the womb. And we can watch that from around second trimester of pregnancy. But we can also analyze the baby's brain when it's first born as well, so it's a newborn. And what you can see, using these incredible new technologies, is that the genes that you're given from your mum and dad line up with how those neural circuits, so a lot of these genes that are involved in really complex behaviors that we've just been talking about, ideas, Ideology, intelligence, um, eating preferences, how we form relationships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of these genes are involved in paving how that brain circuit is going to wire up when we're a baby and then how it's going to operate throughout the life into old age, right? Mm. And you can start to see that there's these genetic genes that we've, genetic predispositions, genes that we've been given from our mum and dad that may have mutated as well or changed in, and recombined in different ways within each of us. Um, and that's linked to how that the architecture of the neural circuit in the baby that's just been born um, and how that then is linked to the behaviors, the very complex behaviors. Um, so we can start to piece together all of this information to see destiny and that watch how it starts to unfold. So all of these technologies are coming together. The genomics revolution, the imaging revolution within neuroscience so that we can see the brain and how we also look at how um, life trajectories are um, kind of occurring for individuals because we've also got this big data revolution so we can start to see how people's lives are panning out uh, to quite a fine level of resolution. Um, So... So I I wanted to use that data and to think about that data in a way that could be useful and positive for society, not in some horrible way to resurrect eugenics, for example. Right, right. You know, because we've got atrocious examples throughout our history of, um, you know, Nazi uh, kind of um, execution of millions of people. Even in Sweden, I think there was mass sterilization of um, disabled children until you know quite late in the last century um and similar things were going on within america as well right um there's been you know atrocious examples of eugenics movements and i don't want the bi- the biological data and all of this information to be used to help spur on another eugenics movement actually what it should be used for is to think well what's the point what is the point in us all be having this complexity in the way that we behave and I, this complexity in our DNA code that allows this wide breadth, this vast breadth of behaviors that as a species we are capable of. You know, because you have different strengths to me. Right. I have different weaknesses to you. What's the point of that? Well, it's the, the point of it is so that when we bring different individuals together that have different biologies, different experiences, then what what we found, and there's lots of studies that have shown this, is that actually when you bring a group of diverse people together, so genetically diverse people, people with different ages, people with different cultural experiences and different early years experiences, and you get them to work together or bring their opinions together in a new way, what you start to see is actually their intelligence that's on offer is much greater than any individual part. So for example, you can see this in action when we look at Wikipedia, you know, okay. the on, like, this online um, kind of editing process has worked and it's resoundingly successful. Right. Or we can see it in the legal system, the judicial system, where we're using the power of the crowd, the jury, in order to make important decisions. I mean, there's some flaws sometimes with this, but we're trying to ba- um, cancel out individual bias or errors in our perception making when we bring people together. And you can see time and time and time again that when you do bring people together, then generally speaking, they get a more representative view of reality and they are able to problem solve and innovate more effectively. 